إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهل يهج محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار After praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and thanking Allah, I thank my noble brothers there in Kansas City, Missouri, at Masjid Anas bin Malik, radiallahu an, for facilitating these weekly classes we will have bi idhnillahi ta'ala every sunday after salatul dhuhr their time we will be covering the three fundamental principles of the noble sheikh muhammad ibn abdul wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala rahmatan wasi'a And the Sheikh, he needs no introduction. May Allah have mercy upon him. For he is well known in the ranks of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah and outside of the ranks of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Many of his works have been published, many of his works have been translated into the English language. We find that the scholars of our time have shown great concern for explaining his works and teaching his works. And this is due to the simplicity of his works and the relevancy of his works in our day and time. Alhamdulillah. The Three Fundamental Principles is one of the books that the scholars of our era highly encourage, highly encourage to be taught, and studied, memorized due to its importance and that which is being covered in the text of the book. The three fundamental principles 
are connected to that which the individual will be questioned about in his grave. When the servant is placed in the grave, Allah Azza wa Jal was sent to angels. Munkar and Nakir and they will sit this individual up and they will question him. Man Rabbuk Madinuk Man Nabiyuk Who is your Lord? What is your religion? And who is your prophet? Who is your Lord? What is your religion? And who is your prophet? These are the three questions that we all will be asked in our graves. So it's upon us to prepare ourselves to answer these questions. Prepare ourselves with knowledge, faith, righteous actions for these questions that will take place in the grave. The explanation that we'll be using or covering is the explanation of the noble scholar of our era. A Sheikh Abdul Aziz Ibn Abdullah bin Baz Rahimahullah Ta'ala who is also a scholar who needs no introduction amongst us for his works are well known and his service that he provided for this Ummah is well known from the many classes he taught and books he explained, and from the fatawa that he has given, answering the questions of the Muslims around the world, and other than that, from the great service that this noble sheikh has put forward. The author, he states, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Salatatul Usul, I'alam. رحمك الله أنه يجب علينا تعلم أربع مسائل. In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the bestower of mercy. The three fundamental principles. The author here begins with the basmala. Bismillahi Rahman Rahim following the the methodology of the Quran and the methodology of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam when he used to send letters to the kings of the dunya Inviting them to Islam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would have written. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim In the beginning or at the top of the letter. So we find. The scholars of Islam. Following the Quran and following the Sunnah. Beginning their works with Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. And beginning with the, the basmala is a means of seeking the blessings, the barakah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is a means of establishing that what one is writing, he's writing for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the name of Allah the most merciful, the bestower of mercy. The 
the three fundamental principles the Sheikh mentions Rahimahullah هذه رسالة مهمة في العقيدة ألفها الشيخ أبو عبد الله الإمام محمد ابن عبد عبد الوهاب ابن سليمان ابن علي التميمي الحنبلي الإمام المشهور المجدد لمن لمن درس من معالم الإسلام في النصف الثاني من القرن الثاني عشر رحمه الله وأكرم مثواه. That this treatise or this important treatise regarding the Aqidah has been offered by the Sheikh Abu Abdullah Al Imam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab ibn Sulaiman ibn Ali Al Tamimi Al Hanbali, the well known Imam, the reviver of that which has gone away from the the teachings of Islam in the second half of the 12th century. May Allah have mercy upon him and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honor him with a noble reward. وَقَدْ كَانَ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهُ يُلَقِّنْ الطَّلَبَ وَالْعَامَ هَذِهِ الْأُصُولِ ليدرسوها ويحفظوها ولتستقر في قلوبهم لقونها قاعدة في العقيدة. The Sheikh رحمه الله states that the Imam, may Allah have mercy upon him, he used to teach his students in the in the general folk or the common folk. These principles, meaning he would he would mention these matters to them and get them to repeat them, in order that they study these affairs and they memorize them, and that these matters resonate in their hearts, because they are a principle in the matter of akida. This statement from the noble scholar Sheikh bin Baz rahimahullah it shows that Imam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab was one who had great concern for the aqidah of al-Islam and propagating the aqidah of al-Islam as the aqidah is the most important aspect of knowledge as it is connected first and foremost to the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is important that we follow the methodology of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his methodology is that he taught aqidah from the beginning of his message to the end the first call of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was la ilaha illallah or as in one narration it mentions the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam went out into the marketplace in mina and he said, Ya qawmi, qulu la ilaha illallah tuflihu. O my people, say la ilaha illallah, and you will be successful. Here the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was calling the people to the correct aqidah. To believe that none has the right to be worshipped except for Allah and to leave off the practices and the beliefs of shirk. And then on the deathbed, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, addressing his Ummah, La'natullah al Yahud wa Nasara, ittaqadu. 
kubura anbiya'ihim masajid. May the curse of Allah be upon the Jews and the Christians. For they have taken the graves of their prophets as places of worship. This is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on his deathbed speaking to his Ummah, the Ummah of Tawheed, the Ummah of the Sunnah, the Sahaba, radiallahu anhum ajma'een, and those who come after them, warning them against the ways of the people of the book who have gone astray in the affair of Aqidah, and as a result of that, they have indulged in the actions of shirk. So those who say to us, enough with teaching Aqidah, enough with teaching the three fundamental principles, enough, 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 we say to them, the methodology of the Prophet Wasallam is enough for us as a proof against you. As a proof against you of your misunderstanding and lack of insight by telling us enough with teaching Aqidah when the Prophet Sallallahu Wasallam taught Aqidah through his entire prophethood and messengership. Sheikh bin Baz rahimahullah ta'ala He mentioned about the Sheikh وَقَدْ كَانَ عُمْرًا مَلِيئًا بِالْخَيْرِ وَالْدَعْوَ إِنَ اللَّهِ وَالْتَعْلِيمِ وَالْإِرْشَادِ وَالصَّبْرَ عَلَى ذَلِكِ وَقَدْ أَنْقَضَ اللَّهُ بِهِ الْعِبَادِ وَالْبِلَادِ فِي زَمَانِهِ that his life was filled with goodness. It was filled with calling to Allah and teaching the people and giving direction to the people and being patient upon that. This is the way of the prophets and the messengers. The prophets and the messengers, their lives were filled with goodness. And likewise, their inheritors, the ulama, as the Prophet Sallallahu Wasallam mentioned, Al-Ulama Warathatul Anbiya. The scholars are the inheritors of the Prophet. They inherit the knowledge of the Prophets. They inherit the, the manhaj, the methodology of the Prophets. And they traverse upon their path. So likewise, the scholars, their lives are filled with goodness. Their lives are filled with calling to Allah and teaching the people, giving them direction and being patient upon doing that. Shaykh bin Baz rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rescued by way of Shaykh Muhammad rahimahullah the servants and the land in his time. Meaning, rescued them by way of the scholar from the affairs of shirk and evil that the people were indulged in. And this is the blessing of a scholar. The scholar, by the permission of Allah, is a means of salvation for the people, meaning the teachings of the scholar. The knowledge that the scholar spreads amongst the people is a means of salvation for the people. And this is why we must be respectful of our scholars, past and present, and even if a scholar makes a mistake, 
We do not follow the mistake of the scholar, but at the same time, we maintain the honor of the scholar. As no one scholar is infallible and free from error, and the only one infallible in this deen is the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He's the only one that we obey unrestrictedly. But when the ulama they teach us this deen based upon the proofs and the evidences, then we adhere to their teachings because they're only conveying to us that which is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And their knowledge of this deen is a means of salvation for the people. The Shaykh mentions, Shaykh bin Baz rahimahullah, هذه المسائل يجب أن يتعلمها المؤمن والمؤمنة صغارا وكبارا. It is obligatory that the believing men and women, or the male and female believers, young and old, it's obligatory upon them to learn these matters, meaning the four matters that the Shaykh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala mentions. أَنَّهُ يَجِبُ عَلَيْنَا تَعَلَّمُ أَرْبَعِ مَسَائِلِ The author, he states, الأولى العلم وهو معرفة الله ومعرفة نبيه ومعرفة دين الإسلام بالأدلة الثانية الأمن به الثالثة الدعوة إليه الرابعة الصبر على الأذى فيه The author he mentions the four matters The first one is knowledge and the knowledge is knowledge of Allah knowledge of his prophet and knowledge of the religion of Al-Islam with the proofs and evidences the second matter acting in accordance to the knowledge practicing the knowledge the third matter calling to the knowledge the fourth matter being patient upon the harm that one encounters. Sheikh bin Baz rahimahullah ta'ala he stated regarding al-ilm fa'ala al-insan an yata'allama wa yatabassara hatta yakuna ala bayyina wa ya'rif deen Allah alladhi khuriqa min ajrihi wa hadha al-ilm huwa ma'rifatu Allah wa ma'rifatu nabiyyihi وَمَعْرِفَةُ دِينِ الْإِسْلَامِ بِالْأَدِلَّةِ فَهَذَا أَوَّلْ شَيْءٍ أَنْ يَتَ أَنْ يَتَبَصَّرَ الْعَبْدُ مَنْ هُوَ رَبُّهُ Sheikh mentions it's upon the individual to learn and to have insight in order that he is upon clarity and he knows the deen of al-Islam which he has been created for. Or he knows the deen of Allah, which he has been created for. This knowledge is knowledge of Allah, knowledge of his prophet, knowledge of the deen of Islam with the proofs and evidences. This is the first matter that the servant is to gain insight regarding, and it is, who is his Lord? Learning the deen is imperative. The Prophet Sallallahu mentioned طالب العلم فريضة على كل مسلم Seeking knowledge is obligatory upon every Muslim. Islam cultivates us upon learning and not blind following and not ignorant faith. Islam cultivates us upon learning and that knowledge precedes statements and actions. Look at the first of the revelation which was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah commanded the Prophet Iqra Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq 
Read in the name of your Lord who has created. The ulama, they say, this is an indication of the importance of knowledge and that the affairs begin with knowledge. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down as the first of the revelation to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from the Quran, Iqra, read. And Iqra came before what? Ya ayyuhal mudathir kum fa'andir Oh, you wrapped up in the garments, arise and warn. Allah didn't command the Prophet وسلم, to go out and warn and give da'wah first. Allah commanded the Prophet وسلم, to read first before he commanded him with going to give da'wah. And this here, alhamdulillah, is a refutation against the methodology of Firqatu Tabliq, the Tabliqis, as they hold themselves to be the people of Da'wah, calling the Muslims to Khair. However, they failed to follow this methodology of knowledge preceding Da'wah, because they take anyone with them to go out to give Da'wah, even if the person is ignorant. They'll put anyone up to give a bayan even if the person is ignorant and doesn't know anything about Islam. And this is a faulty methodology they have with them along with many other things that they have with them. But the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that he commanded the Prophet sallallahu wa sallam to have knowledge Meaning when he commanded him Iqra, this is a command of knowledge, to have knowledge. And then afterwards you have the command to rise and warn. So Islam cultivates us upon learning and having knowledge before anything. And this is in order that we have insight in our deen. And that when we practice Islam is is based upon the knowledge that we have. And the Shaykh mentions that the servant knows the deen of Allah which he has been created for. And the deen of Allah is ibadah. And Allah has created us for his worship as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Al-Dhariyat وَمَا خَلَقُتُ الْجَنَّةِ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ and I have not created the jinn nor the mankind except to worship me. This is the purpose of creation. To worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is no accepted or correct worship except through the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-Islam. As Allah azza wa jal mentions, in the deen عند الله islam Indeed, the deen with Allah, meaning that which is accepted by Allah, is al-Islam. And Allah Azza wa Jal mentions, وَمَنْ يَبَتَغِي غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا فَلَنْ يُقْبَلَ مِنْ And whoever desires other than Islam, as a religion, a way of life, it will never be accepted from him. Inshallah Ta'ala, we will stop at this point. Whatever is correct, the praise is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And whatever is incorrect, it is from myself. Subhanaka Allahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka. Wa atubu ilik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.